My name is Gemma Reeves and I'm a business unit manager specialising in data centres for Europe. I want to talk to you about designing heat exchange for data centres and why it needs to be looked at differently from HVAC applications. Data centres have higher performance expectations, so you should demand more from your heat exchangers. I'm going to run you through a few key points for designing data centre heat exchangers and explain why bigger isn't necessarily better. I know it's tempting to think that a larger heat exchanger will provide a safety margin or prepare you for future increases in capacity, but I'll tell you why starting off big is a bad idea. Firstly, I want to talk to you about temperatures. It's better not to design for cooling water temperatures that occur once or twice a year. If you design for these worst cases, the heat exchanger will be over surface for most of its operation and it will affect the performance of the unit over time. And the same goes for temperature approach. The closer the temperatures are, the larger the heat exchanger becomes and the difference between a one or one and a half degree approach could mean a unit that's half the size. Now we move on to flow rates. Plate heat exchangers actually work better with similar flow rates on each circuit. We do offer models that can handle asymmetric flows, but for some sizes, the heat exchange will have to be optimised for one side or for the other. Which leads us to talk about pressure drops. Heat exchangers turn available pressure drops into heat transfer, and a limited pressure drop requires a larger heat exchanger. Come and discuss pressure drops with us and help us to help you find the best balance between pump running costs and the efficiency of your units. When we talk about pressure drops though, we also talk about turbulence, and turbulence really is key. Plate heat exchangers need turbulent flow to maximise their heat transfer. That is why it is so important to have the right size of heat exchanger in your system. Too large a plate pack will lead to laminar flows and without turbulence that creates issues such as fouling. All heat exchangers will eventually see some fouling in them. If you're used to working with shell and tube heat exchangers, it's very important to know that you cannot apply the same fouling factors when you design a plate heat exchanger. All these fouling factors do is add unnecessary surface area and that will cause even more fouling in your unit. Talk to us about shear stress and the self-cleaning effect of the plates to minimise fouling and to maximise service. And last but not least, specify AHRI certified heat exchangers for guaranteed performance. It might not be known to everyone that there's a third party verification process for heat exchangers available. You buy certified chillers, cooling towers and other AC equipment, why not heat exchangers as well? Every year, AHRI Performance tests a number of heat exchanger models from each supplier, checking the results against the supplier's design software. This ensures that you, as a customer, are getting the performance from the unit that you expect. It only takes a simple sentence in your specification documents. So allow us to work with you, and together we can optimise the design of your heat exchangers. I hope you found this video interesting. Contact me or my colleagues next time you have any questions about heat transfer in and around a data centre.